Greetings and welcome on Les Atrec, le son de France. Il s'agit d'un boui boui bien crano. On this second episode, you won't be bothered too much by the rain, but you will discover how my attempt at a long walking day came to a brutal halt because of an high altitude aperitif. Discover the vestiges of a World War I battle narrated by a local tourist officer and drool over a full plate of French delicacy as the owner of a ferme auberge explains why life is definitely better when you don't fast. This episode will take us from Bar to the 500 km mark of the Hexatrek, right before the Gorge du Doux. But first, for something completely usual, have more castles. This is nothing short of extraordinary. Castle is called the Castle Rammstein and it's being taken care of by a bunch of volunteers. And this bunch of volunteers had the fantastic idea to install this little cafe. It's just lovely. You have a view of the valley and another castle and you have the castle showing you. It's welcome. And on top of that, you have a logbook. I love knockbooks. You can say that you passed. And that's, I think, cool. Please say that you passed. In the Rammstein Cafe. In the middle of nowhere. It's just the best. In this section, the trek is taking us on more hilly terrain and you experience the first noticeable climbs. So obviously, you expect to be rewarded for the efforts. You know, expectations. Welcome at the top of the Königstuhl. 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 This is the peak that you will get from Ribouville, which is one of the cutest villages ever. The way up here is quite long and tedious, all in the forest. And when you're climbing and you go all the way to a thousand meters, you're really expecting a good view. There's no view here. But you get a very cool throne of rocks. So you can be the king of the rock. This disappointment spawned a very silly idea in me. I had a silly idea today. Waking up extremely early and deciding to walk 37 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, like it's reasonable for me. It's 37 kilometers. 37? 37 kilometers. Oh, me. But I will walk three more kilometers to get to another one. I was warned that the next unguarded refuge, Le Refuge du Brésoir, was very popular amongst the local to throw parties. I thought arriving there early enough would save me. But alas, arriving at 10 a.m., I stumbled upon those two local philosophers fighting yesterday's hangover with tomorrow's headache, while explaining to me why locals love to come here. Because the, uh, it's beautiful. All the place is beautiful. Uh -huh. We have a nice view, amazing view, from all direction. This is the highest spot of the region. And uh, we have a, an amazing sunrise in the morning. And I, I advise to all the people who like um, walking through the forest and to, to want to uh, evacuate the pressure of all day to come here because you can, uh, you are, can refresh your, your health. And I know a thing or two about health. Like this recipe for picon bière they shared with me right before leaving. Picon being an 18 degrees liquor that locals like to use as syrup to enhance beers. Picon is very important for the beer, for a good beer. To know if your picon is at a good density, you can you, you serve you, you have... in a glass and you, you take your finger like this behind your, your glass. And if you see, if you see your the finger, finger through it's not the good. glass, it's not good. You must need more picon. Yeah. You, you exactly. can't see your finger, it's not good. <laughs> now that I had drowned my 36 km attempt with a sun-warmed 1664 beer, I took it slow again. And right before arriving at La Tête de Faux, I encountered randomly a local guide that could explain to me the importance of this place. It was uh, an important place during the First World War, uh, during which 
a lot of people were killed. Uh, so uh, when we, when you will arrive in this area, you will see some traces. There are two feelings. Uh, one is the feeling of nature, the beauty, and the other one is um, to go back in the past and um, to remember the tragic episodes uh, that took place in this uh, this area. So, so you mean that since the First World War, what we see behind you, the walls and all of that, has been kept intact? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, little bit uh, down the hill, there is a cemetery uh, in the middle of the forest. So it's uh, another place which capture your your attention. And a few kilometers later, you have the Lac Blanc where there are beautiful landscapes and other atmosphere. Okay. So it's the magic of the place. There is different atmospheres in a little bit, bit of time. This marked the end of the dense forest as the trek started to reach the high Vosges. There, I had the fortune to meet several locals that were going my direction. So we created a short band of misfits to tackle the climb of the landmark of the area. What you see behind me is the Grand Ballon des Vosges, which in French means the big bowl of the Vosges. It's named after, well, you get it. It serves as a weather forecast system. And also, if you ever want to be a criminal mastermind and live in the 60s and fight James Bond, this is a beautiful place to have a lair. I was so happy to be with people that could share accurate info on what was around. So, there is an erratum, because apparently Daniel here, <laughs> who is the local of Les Vosges and he knows everything, is climbing everywhere, is all the time in the mountains, he knows everything. He is playing the guide for everybody. He told me, this is a meteorological station. This is actually his voice, he sounds like that. But no, he just checked and what is it? I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually a radar uh, to check air control or whatever in case, I don't know, Chinese MiG would come here and try to invade us or something. So we're ready in Les Vosges. And to add to your knowledge, just know that this long staircase that there is just in front of the Grand Ballon and that seems to just disappear into the ground is actually here to mimic the tail of a comet the Grand Ballon being the comet head. Now, reassured on our nation's impenetrable air defense system, I continued my solo walk. Not so far, I discovered what makes one of the biggest appeal of the region, the Ferme Auberge. The Ferme Auberge is a nice place where you came after a long day of hiking. If you want to eat something, or if you want just a beer, or just a little a little thing with a group of for your friends, and uh, and that's it. So, so do you produce the what you're selling in here? Yes, we are um, meat produ producer. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, we uh, we cooked uh, everything we put. Uh, everything we cooked is in relation with uh, our, our production. If you are a hiker and you just arrived after a long day and you want to eat here, uh, what kind of food do you serve? Like, oh, what yeah. kind of meal can you do? You, you can, can have um, I don't know, a meat pie um, with uh, smashed potatoes, uh -huh. you can have uh, white cheese, you can have um, uh, a gratin fromager, or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> potatoes with uh, a lot of cheese. Uh, uh -huh. uh, on top of the on the potatoes and that's great. That's great. Okay. Some um, look uh, something that uh, only in, Al in Alsace we may uh, uh -huh. we make that. And it's, uh, it's uh, not possible to pronounce in uh, English or in French because uh, it's um, a particular a particular language. Okay. This ferme auberge is run by Guillaume and his family, and they are only using their product or the ones of local producers. A really nice job with a view. After all the explanation of Guillaume, I couldn't resist. And I went for an actual full plate. It is a little bit of everything. You have the mashed potatoes, the moi that I can't pronounce. Mm. It's extremely, extremely cold and refreshing. His pie, the tourte that he made himself, 
and some cheese and all. It's just fantastic. Despite being quite full that day, my appetite for local products got satisfied again when I spotted a local brewery a few hundred meters off trail. Oxel Beers has been installed here for a few years and Lois is making several kinds of beers by himself. He was nice enough to show me the whole process and to have a degustation in the end. Enough to gather courage to face the most boring section of the Hexatrek yet. This is 70 kilometers of nothing in the sun and you can basically camp nowhere or I mean legally camp nowhere so I'm going to try and for once I can have somebody filming me so I'm enjoying that so boring in fact that I didn't shoot anything as they were just roads and urban areas with closed shops so in the meantime have an earlier point of view and me eating while staring into France Speaking of eating, this gourmet trek ended the boring section with a surprising twist in Dal, where a food truck appeared out of nowhere, looking straight out of a cool kid's 80s TV show with wannabe rappers, but delivering the most exquisite and cheapest sandwich of my whole exit trek. This food truck looks like nothing from a distance, but everything they're doing, the bread is from the local bakery, the meat is from the local butcher shop, the cheese is from the local cheesemaker. Everything is fresh and homemade and tastes amazing. Even the beers are from a local brewery and are extremely tasty. I really recommend. And the prices are very cheap. I mean, it's perfect for hikers. As the topography of the Jura was starting to show, announcing the beginning of more mountainous terrain, I noticed an enigmatic inscription on the World War I monument. Channeling my inner Albert Lund, I started to ask questions around. This is the kind of monument you can find everywhere in the local villages. This is a monument for the people who died during World War I, but this one attracted my attention. Because what you can read here is literally Clovis Bad Mayor. Clovis Bad Mayor. Is this Clovis? such a terrible mayor that everybody decided to pay for a monument to say so but apparently that's not the story club is bad he's his lame so it doesn't mean that clovis was a bad mayor or that clovis bad was a bad mayor it doesn't mean either that clovis bad was a good mayor it means nothing it's just bad mauvais and if you go to the local cemetery you can see a lot of mauvais and this is a story I get from asking the locals around, because I find it very funny. And here I was, descending into the Gorge du Doux, where I could draw a gigantic message for the Hexatracker behind me. Here's what I'm extremely proud of, even though I did it. Well, it's just this little rock. It's the official 500 kilometers mark, so it's been 500 kilometers. Technically, it's not the real 500, it's 499 point something. But, but actually, the real one would be around there. So it's not very interesting over there, so I thought this is a perfect canvas. Well, d don't listen to me, as at the end of that finger is the beginning of the really interesting next episode of Le Hexatrec, Le Srou de France. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys. Ah, that's insane. That's a lot of people. Viens pour pour le viens pour pour le viens. Quand j'entends des chansons, ça me rend tout polisson.